the Morrison has a long history of experimenting and innovating in planetariums. When it went into operation in the 1950s, it was absolutely point of the arrow technology. It was the best planetarium in the world. And it's particularly exciting now that Morrison is again at the point of the arrow of planetarium technology worldwide. On November 8, 1952, the Morrison Planetarium opened at the California Academy of Sciences. But its story actually starts much earlier in the 1930s, as big planetariums popped up around the world. There was one in Chicago and one in New York and nothing west of the Mississippi. So they really sort of thought about it and planned about it, but the war came. The Academy had a special role during World War II. One of our whole exhibit halls was cordoned off from the public and turned into a into an optical repair shop. And we repaired primarily binoculars because there were lots and lots of binoculars on the ship, but also submarine periscopes. When the war was over, plans for the planetarium resumed. The planetarium was built in uh, between 1948 and 1952 with funding provided by Alexander Morrison and Edward Hoffeld and, and uh, uh, donations from members. Another $10,000 came from an unlikely source. The San Francisco school kids donated a lot of money in nickels and dimes and pennies for the building of the, the planetarium. But where to find a star projector? At the time, all star projectors came from Germany, not exactly an accessible purchase post-World War II. No matter, enter Dr. Dallas Hanna. He was a real Renaissance man and an optical expert. And he was, he said, well, there's no reason why we can't build our own planetarium projector. The people here had gathered enough optical experience um, repairing and refurbishing optical equipment for the war effort that they thought that they could build a projector on their own. And it was um, recognized as projecting one of the finest simulations of the night sky in the world. And it, it operated perfectly for 51 years. It was very cutting edge. In the early 50s, I don't think you could have possibly found an artificial star field that was as glorious as the one created by the original Morrison Planetarium. The Planetarium shows in those days were what we would now think of as pretty traditional astronomy-based planetarium shows. The lecturers, uh, they were live, and the special effects all had to be built. We had optical and mechanical devices for absolutely everything. The only electrical things we had were motors and lights, and the only electronic equipment we had were amplifiers and microphones and tape recorders, and, and that was it. There wasn't a lot of uh, uh, high-tech stuff yet. And the lecturer would say, okay, let's see, we want to show this, and he would reach over and push that switch. The projector would turn on and he would talk about it. And then when he was through talking about it, he would turn it off again. Starting in uh, 63 or 4, we were doing a show every month, a new show every month. And how can we talk about the history of Morrison Planetarium without mentioning Laserium? I want to say 73 or 74. The shows were about an hour long, essentially. It was extremely popular at first. I mean, unbelievably popular. Long lines, hard to get in. But time caught up with San Francisco's venerable planetarium. I think 1989 was sort of the, the, the biggest changer. We had the Loma Prieta earthquake. The planetarium, we were shut down for three or four days, but we had no damage in the planetarium. But and certainly, very soon after that, we started thinking about being far more automatic. Of course, over the years, uh, technology surpassed it. When the Academy closed in 2003, it was an opportunity to rebuild and remake the Morrison Planetarium. It was a fascinating opportunity to really think about what a planetarium means for the 21st century. One of the amazing things about the Morrison Planetarium is its location here in the Bay Area, the center of creativity and technology and visual effects. And we knew that the new Morrison Planetarium had to take advantage of the remarkable community in which we're situated. So we reached out to technology companies and also to artists who've worked on 
many amazing productions for Hollywood. And we looked at how we could transform some of those skill sets into productions for the new California Academy of Sciences. You can actually fly through the stars and see them pass around you. You can fly around a constellation and look at it in three dimensions, go to another planet, look at planets up close, and you can use actual data, uh, what we get back from spacecraft launched by NASA and other space agencies, uh, to map out the surfaces of planets and look at the planets, something you can't do with just slides, which is the traditional route that planetarians have taken. This capability allows us to visualize not just astronomy, but the other sciences represented by the Academy as well. So we can talk about geology, we can talk about biology and, and uh, environments. And Morrison Planetarium can go so many places it hasn't gone yet. So the future, I think, is bright in terms of uh, newer technology, but also newer stories, fresher ideas, and continuing to explore new ways of looking at the world. Here's to another 60 years of the Morrison Planetarium making history.